Chuck, every time you see a space movie or something and people yeah. are in space, they're always weightless. You ever notice that? That's true. Um, and you know that because they're, um, well, if you're Sandra Bullock, your hair is like a <laughs> afro. You, kind no. of got, you got a little space afro going on. <laughs> Except you know. she didn't. Uh, exactly. In the movie Gravity, her bangs always seem to know which way down was, even That's though everything funny. else was floating yeah. in the capsule. So, the, so, so it leaves people thinking that space equals no gravity. Right. It leaves people thinking that. Like you just go up into space and all of a sudden you're weightless. Right. And weightlessness is a very special condition Ooh. that for which you do not have to be in space to achieve. So I just want to just t tease this out of people's now, understandings gonna, and misunderstandings. I'm not going to push back on you. I'm just going to say that maybe your people have something to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> Here's why. Uh, whenever you see people, uh, you know, in, in space, in the space station, whatever, they always say they're in zero G. Well, we think zero G means zero gravity. That's what we're going to think. Correct. It is zero G because there's no net gravitational force acting on them. Okay? No net grab. There's an important distinction here. And I don't want to be too pedantic, semantic about it. Yeah. But... But, uh -huh. okay, um, if you are in orbit around Earth, okay, you are falling towards Earth. We did a whole explainer on this. Yes, we did. How do you achieve orbit? All right. right. And talk about Newton and shooting the cannonball off. All the, mountain, the cannonball and, and you duck right. and you're all of that. So exactly. we go back. We'll put a link to that previous one. So here's my point. Let's say you are en route towards the moon. Okay. Okay. Do you know how we do that? How, how does NASA do that? Well, they go into uh, orbit. The subway? Then, uh, then they do a, tr a TLI, translunar injection, where they leave Earth orbit right. and aim towards where the moon will be, will when, be. They when they get there. Okay? Nice. All right. So at that point, they shut off their engines. If you're in space and your engines are shut off, you are falling towards whatever is pulling you wherever and it is. Wherever it is, right. You are in free oh, fall. Oh, wait, let me say something that makes me kind of sm sound smart. Because, and I learned this from an explainer that we did. This is why you need to listen to the explainers, people. It, you will be falling to whatever pulls you, no matter where that is, unless you happen to be in a Lagrange point. Oh, ow, ah, ow. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> This is what I love this job, because I didn't know that, like, however, <laughs> whenever I didn't know it, I didn't know it. Okay, so there are five of them, and so we don't have to get into that just now. But okay. all I'm saying is, if you are coasting, then you are falling towards where whatever is pulling you at that right. point. Right. Okay? You will be weightless as long as you are coasting. Right. Okay. No matter what. Okay? And so here's what will happen. They have translunar injection, which is enough speed to make it to the one of the Lagrange points between Earth and the moon. Mm -hmm. That's called L1. At that point, the Earth's pull towards Earth equals the moon pull towards, towards the moon. Uh -huh. That's a balance point. It's a balance okay? point. So now, if I have enough energy to cross that point, now I will guarantee to fall Towards the towards moon. Towards the moon. Exactly. Now, if I don't have enough speed to reach that point, guess what happened? Uh, Earth says, where are you going? <laughs> Come on back. <laughs> the hell you think you do? Oh, you trying, trying to sneak out, you trying to sneak out on me? Get your ass back there. Get your ass back here right now. <laughs> so if you don't make it to that first Lagrangian point, <laughs> you will fall back to Earth. Exactly. Okay? okay. But that entire time, you're still just falling. Okay, as you're leaving Earth, you are falling. Earth's gravity is pulling back on you, slowing you down, but you're in free fall, right. even though you're leaving Earth and you're free fall when you turn around and you're free fall when you come back, you're weightless that entire time. Okay, gotcha. if gotcha. you cross the, the boundary point, you're weightless crossing it. You're weightless the whole time. Right. Okay, you are weightless until you hit the moon, <laughs> <laughs> then you are one-sixth Earth gravity, okay, on the moon after you collide, mm -hmm. all right? Or if you turn on your engines. 
Okay. If you turn on your rocket engines anywhere in space, okay, when you were otherwise just coasting, right, you will have what is effectively a gravitational field inside your rocket. All right. Because the rockets will be accelerating the spaceship. Got you. Okay? It'll be accelerating. Right. So, so what's a good way to show that? Um, uh, all right, so how about this? So we're in a rocket sort of headed towards Mars, let's say. Okay. okay. We're standing on the bottom of the rocket. Okay. Okay, so the bottom, the, the trail end of this thing headed towards Mars. But we're weightless. Mm-hmm. We're weightless. But we, we're glued to the bottom. And I toss you something. It'll just go straight towards you. Right. Okay, because everything is weightless. Right. Everything, nothing's falling. It'll just go straight towards you. Okay, now watch. I now ignite the rockets. The, the moment I toss the object, right, the rocket is going at a particular speed the instant I let go of the object. And the rocket is going faster in the next instant and still faster in the instant after that. So the object will look like it'll fall towards the floor of the rocket. rocket. Towards the back, which is our floor. Which is our floor. It'll look like it's falling towards the rocket, towards the bottom of the rocket. Whereas it's the bottom of the rocket accelerating towards the object. Right. Einstein figured out that if you're in a rocket, you cannot know the difference between the rocket accelerating through space and whether the rocket is sitting there on Earth. Right, because the rocket is creating an artificial gravity. Correct, by Whoa. having by, by having, having the acceleration. Now, go. I've managed to catch in a couple of episodes of The Expanse. I love that show. This is a, one of the favorite shows of one of our, um, our lead producers and yeah. writers, Lin, uh, Lindsay Walker. They want uh, you to come, they wanted you to come on the um their podcast. Who are you talking about? They have a big podcast that was the expan- oh, How do you know they wanted me to come on? This is the first time you're telling me this? I am for I should have probably told you that, right? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the expanse is like there's the the folks from Mars and then there's the asteroid belt, then the Earth Federation, and of course there's wars and things and fighting and bad people. All right. Point is when they put on their rockets. There's acceleration inside the rocket. That's right. They, they, there's basically, they have a way to t- t- attach to the surfaces when they are in zero G, and they make right. sure you know that, so they're yeah. not playing loosey-goosey with the laws yeah, of they physics. Yeah, they wear gravity boots. Yeah. B- gravity battery boots. But in other conditions and other circumstances, and I haven't seen all seasons, but the few I've seen, they're thinking about this. No, they, 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 play, they play it straight, yeah. And they play it straight, and when, the, when it's accelerating, there is an effective field of gravity in the ship. And the higher that acceleration is, the higher that gravity will feel. Okay? Mm-hmm. Unlike the film, what's the one where they had moon pirates? Ad Astra. Oh, yes, Ad in, Astra. In oh, Ad yeah, Astra, they're, they're in rockets accelerating to the moon, so it takes faster than three days to get there. Right. And in the accelerating rockets, everybody's weightless. Yes, that's like, correct. No. That's, That's not how that works. So great. If what you a, want to get to the moon in a few hours, everybody's sitting in their chair there, feeling this gravity. Might as okay. well. You might as well be on a seven thirty seven to thank you, you know, thank you, New York City. Thank you, because you know, it's the same thing. Same thing. And, uh, what a great catch! Because I now remember that, but that, uh, I didn't even catch that. I didn't even make that connection. They're all floating around weightless, and yeah, you floating, see the rockets right. firing in the and back. It's not how that works. Wow. No, the difference with the seven thirty seven is in the seven thirty seven you still feel Earth's gravity down because you're not in orbit and you're not in free fall. Right. That's why balloons, if you're floating, but you still have a, if you put a scale under your feet, you're going to still weigh as much as you do on Earth. Right. It's That's not true. in free fall. Right. Okay? Right. It's all about free fall. Now, if now if I put you in an elevator, cut the cable, Right. you're in free fall. Right. And so you're going to fall are- and, the, and, the, and the chalk that you're holding is falling or the ball... And everything's falling, and it looks like it's floating in front of your face. So you could let go of your drink, your little soda can, while you're falling in the elevator, and it would just stay right there, right with you. Correct. Correct. And you want to know a really cool experiment? Okay? You could do this at home, but we'll do it in the elevator first. Because these are experiments you do in the elevator before you die at the bottom. Okay? So this is... But it's for science. Okay? Well, we might as well get those experiments out of the way. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to die, let it not be in vain. Okay. Exactly. Uh, when the elevator hits the bottom. 
So if you if you if you have one of these big gulps, okay, so it's a huge container, and you're sitting there, and the elevator's on the you know hundredth floor, and you puncture a hole in the side of your your big gulp vessel. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's going to happen? Well, it should start you know sprinkling out. It, it was a sprinkle. It's a nice hole. Stream. So it'll, it's a stream it'll, of. Liquid. It'll stream out. Stream. It'll have a nice arc as mm-hmm. it goes down. Okay, right. it's coming out because it feels pressure. From the from weight the, of the water above, above the hole. Above it, above the hole, right. I, I go back to our water tower. Water towers, yep. uh, If you want to know about the weight of water. So, and by the way, if you put multiple holes, mm-hmm. the one at the bottom will make a longer stream than the ones that are above it. Hmm. Because Show it's under off. higher pressure. Right. Okay? So you have a long stream, a middle stream, and a little stream. Okay? If you can punch three holes in it simultaneously. Right. That's the weight of the water putting pressure to have the water exit the hole. So now, cut the cable. Okay. You fall. The cup falls. The, the soda falls. Everything is falling, and everything is in free fall, and everything is weightless. You are in zero G. If you are in zero G, the water is no longer under pressure, under pressure. because the water above it doesn't weigh anything. Right. And if the water above it doesn't weigh anything, there is no pressure for the water to come out the hole. The water does not know to exit the hole, and all three of those spillages cuts off instantly. Nice. For the entire journey until you die at the bottom. Right. In which case, you just got a little a bigger mess on the floor than you have to worry about with the big gulp. You know, <laughs> okay. believe me. <laughs> okay, so now, the way to do this is go get a big gulp, right? Ready? Here's uh-huh. what you do. Puncture three holes in it, three vertical holes, and then put tape, one piece of tape over it, okay? okay? Now fill it up with some liquid that doesn't make a mess. Mm-hmm. Now stand up on some ladder, mm-hmm. all right? Or above some stairs or something, right? Now hold it up high mm-hmm. and film this. Film this, okay? Okay. Take the tape. Quickly remove Rip it, it off. You'll, you'll see the three streams, and then let it go. And all three streams will just stop, like they were just cut off. Because while the cup is falling, it is weightless. Nice. And it'll continue that way until it hits the ground. Very cool. Very cool. In fact, do it and put your video in the, in the, in the thread below. Do it. Yeah, go ahead. Do yeah. it. Post it. Post it. Uh, please post it if it didn't work. Uh, it will work because it's physics. No, I'm going to say, if it didn't work, we know you messed something up real bad. Or it's you're still, not of this planet or, or of this here. universe. <laughs> or you're not here. That's so cool. So anyhow, if you are accelerating, this is what happens. And by the way, NASA calls it microgravity. To this day, I do not understand why. Or rather, I'll make a stronger statement. Okay. They have misnamed it by calling it microgravity. Okay. Gravity is identically zero on an orbiting spacecraft. They're, they're worried because we're still in Earth's gravitational field. Right. Okay? So I think they're worried that that might confuse people. So that's why you say zero G, because that's a, that's a force, the zero G force. Gotcha. That's a, it is a zero G. Zero nice. G. And Walter Cronkite in the 1960s, when we when, when Apollo was eight, Apollo, nine, Apollo eight or 10, when we first went to the moon before the astronauts uh, landed, this, one of his broadcasts said, um, as of 445 this afternoon, the astronauts have left the gravitational pull of the Earth. It's like... And then he, then he had to say, this just in, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I've just been told that I'm a complete dumbass because that's not true. Because they're en route to the moon, which last we checked, is held to Earth by Earth's, Earth's by gravity, gravity, right? So... Uh, what he meant there was that it crossed from Earth's influence to the moon's influence. He, it crossed one of the Lagrange points. Right. So he lost an edu- uh, a, a learning opportunity for the audience. And so, yeah, there's no micro nothing. Okay. Right. It is zero freaking G. Period. Nice. There you go. Zero ah, man, G. This, this was fun. Um, this was great. <laughs> All right. And, and this thing with the acceleration in Earth's gravity, uh, the that's called to Einstein, the equivalence principle. And it's one of the deepest, most brilliant ideas ever advanced 
in the history of physics. The equivalence principle. Right. That yes. gravitational acceleration is not only equivalent, it is indistinguishable from acceleration by rockets or anything else right. that would move exactly. you through space. If you did that in a, in a box with no windows, right. you, would, you not would not be able know. to tell that. Correct. Look at that. Am I on Earth or am I accelerating through space at 1G? Look you would that. not know. Science. you got to love it. I'm and just sorry. a few days ago, I did a fast calculation. If you accelerate at 1G, it'll take you about 10 months, I think. I have to redo it to get precise. About 10 months to reach the speed of light. Oh, wow. Because you're, yeah. 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 Because there's no, you're resistance. always, you're your speed is always like speeding up. Always, always speeding, speeding up. up. That's it. The push is just the push on top of the push on top of the push on top of the push. It keeps going. Like, it keeps going. It keeps going. That's, that's, that's right. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. super cool, man. I and, love and, it. And, the, and one last thing the units of acceleration, that's why they have this weird construct. Okay. So the acceleration of gravity is 32 feet per second per second. That is, those are units, of, what does that mean, per second, per second? What does that mean? And it's actually per second squared if you did it out. What that means is for every second, you increase your speed by 32 feet per second. Right. So how fast are you going after two seconds? 64 feet per how second. How fast are you going after three seconds? Well, 128 per second. No, 96. I'm sorry, 96 feet. Oh, okay. oh no, it's 32, not 64. 32, 64. right, right. Okay. It's just another 32. Oh, another 32. So for every okay. second, every your second, speed it's keeps another 32. And it will never stop. All right. Never stop. Never well, stop. it'll stop until so, you hit. Oh, wait. Now you just made me think of the expanse again. I just got something that they do in that what show. Do they do? What do they do? When they're approaching a planet, even though they're really far away from the planet, the rockets are firing in the opposite uh, direction. Yes. 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 That's yes. Awesome. That's yes. Why. Otherwise, they'll just free fall they'll, down. They'll free fall down, and they'll and they'll crash land. So it, right. so you have to so you turn around. The rockets slow you down. That will give you an acceleration. By the way, yeah. okay, and, and it'll give you. So all of a sudden, they'll have some kind of uh, right. g forces operating on them, and they can take that all the way in if they want. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it looks weird because they're like nowhere near the planet, but yet they're still firing retro rockets. Well, yeah, because they've been speeding up so fast that whole way. Time. Falling towards them. Falling Correct. towards the planet. They have to do that in, in order to put on the brakes. In yeah. fact, one of the ideas of how to get to Mars without being zero G for nine months is you accelerate at one G halfway to Mars. Right. Then you turn, turn around, around and decelerate at, at 1G to Mars. And so you're in Earth's gravity, 1G, the entire trip. Awesome. That's how you do that. And then you don't yeah. need the medical examiner right. looking exactly. at your, yeah. or whoever they are. You know, Something's your, happened to his bone density. We're bone not density. actually sure what it is. <laughs> he has no, no bone density issues. Not exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's more just zero G talk. Oh, that was great. All right, Chuck. Love it. Calling it quits there. This has been another explainer from Star Talk. Thanks, Chuck, always for being there. Always a pleasure. As always, keep looking up. <laughs>